Hello, welcome to Revelator Health. So this video is for you. This is uh, an update on the vented dipstick idea that I had. And I just wanted to clarify a couple of points as well. So let's get into it. Revelator Health. Hello there. Right, so uh, this is the uh, dipstick from the Harley Davidson Sport Glide uh, Softail. Uh, now, what I did initially, uh, unfortunately, I've bent it, but I put a bicycle valve uh, in there, uh, drilled it into there, stuck it in there, and a bit of tubing with a kind of fil fuel filter catch can, and basically it was working. Unfortunately, in the first video, I missed out a lot of information. Although I put it in the pinned comments underneath, I missed out a lot of information. So I want to clarify those points before I talk about the new modification to this, or another idea, I should say, and then how I'm going to fit it to the bike, which will be right at the end of the video. Okay, so let's address one thing first of all. Um, lots of people were asking me, is this a fix for the oil transfer from the, pri uh, from the transmission to the primary? No, it's got nothing to do with that. This is the engine oil dipstick uh, only. Okay, the other thing was people were asking, well, uh, is, the, um, is the crankcase pressure really going to be affected by this vented dipstick because effectively you've got a scavenge filter system or scavenge oil system? Um, I don't believe, I'm not 100% sure here, but I don't believe it's a completely sealed system. So there is a bit of a pressure differential. So I think coming out of there, it, it, it might help a little bit. That's the theory anyway. So I can't be 100% sure. The other thing that people are asking about, if I put an inline uh, valve in here, would that decompress or would that pressurize even more, or put a negative pressure in the crankcase? Personally, I'm not 100% sure on that either. Um, in the end, I didn't put an inline fuel, um, inline valve here. So any air excess pressure that was building out was allowed to flow back in anyway, which I believe would be a better one. I don't think I made that clear in the first video, so that's my fault entirely. Uh, so that's another thing. Um, the other thing is uh, about the actual dipstick itself. What I completely failed to mention was, and again, my fault entirely, is that the standard dipstick that you get, whilst it is hollow, and the procedure I showed you was correct, and drew, drill a very small hole to put this bicycle valve uh, in, although mine's bent, um, uh, is work. The problem is that the actual top here uh, isn't uh, sealed. It's not sealed to the shaft, so there is uh, gaps there. So what you need to do, you need to pack the inside with some cloth or some sponge to be able to catch that oil that's gushing up through the holes at the bottom here, which you've drilled out. But also then you need to seal the edge here with some kind of gasket sealer, silicone, whatever. You need to be able to create a firm seal under there, really. Then whatever is coming out of there, you're trying to force all that hot oily air, if you will, uh, up through that little small aperture. Now, so that's one thing I, I totally forgot to mention that I'd done that and it's only after I published the video I suddenly realized wait a minute I need to say this so I put it in the pinned comment so apologies for that other people have been saying actually the the holes that I've drilled are too small and also the outlet is too small um, again this was just an idea that I had about pressure differential and whether any air pressure being released from that hole should be suffice. I think it is, um, but I could be completely wrong. So I'm not saying to you that that small hole there is going to be enough, but I take people's point. You know, if you've got a bigger hole, then potentially you've got uh, easier pressure equalization, if that's the right word, but you know what I mean. So that's it. Another point somebody really um, made a great point, actually, and I forgot your name, so I do apologize. Uh, again, just ignore this. I've, I've just broken this uh, bicycle valve. But this bicycle valve that I used, mine was free flowing both ways. 
Some, uh, of course, uh, have just a one-way valve in them, so it wouldn't work. So whilst you're using this to blow up a football, let's say, you're pumping air through it that way, it doesn't let air come back out this way. Uh, mine does, or did, before I've just broken it. Um, so what uh, you know, you, so it wouldn't really have the desired effect anyway. So that is completely right, absolutely right. Um, but I also did say that you know there are lots of variations on the theme. So you might all you need is a hollow tube, a threaded tube, you know, through the top of your cap that's going to let air through and then attach some kind of pipe to it. I still believe that pipe is the right way to go or tubing to some kind of catch can and have a long enough tube so it allows for you know hot air to come out uh, and then any oil to just go up and then come back down again. That's what you want really because you don't want to be losing oil. Right. So that's, hopefully, I've answered quite a few questions there. Uh, but one of the biggest ones was I forgot to say that the top here, the black cap, isn't sealed to the, the grey shaft, okay? So oil will spurt out if you haven't got that sealed up. Right, let's talk about my other idea, right? And it isn't kind of, you know, I don't own this idea of course and there's lots and as i said in the previous video there's lots of ideas there's lots of variations on the theme here so i'm not saying this is the right thing i'm not even sure if this is 100 percent going to work i'm not sure if uh if uh, this vented dipstick idea is 100 percent bona fide either i'm just trying to experiment with it as well so you know i don't have any inside knowledge here that says this is absolutely correct I'm just trying to come up with ideas for you. Anyway, so basically what I've got is one of these, a pipe fitting, like that, yep. And, and it's a brass uh, pipe fitting. It's basically a BSP, uh, 1 8th. Uh, BSP is a British standard pipe. I think in America it's NPT, National Pipe, something or other. Uh, um, but it depends where you are in the world, what kind of pipe fittings. Anyway, small a small pipe fitting. Basically, you want to try and put that in there, in the top there like that. We're going to try and drill that. But the problem is, of course, uh, it's being able to get this in there, have it fitted on there properly. Now, the only way I'm going to be able to do this is to be able to drill a smaller hole wrap this in PTFE tape, this white sort of sealing tape, and get it in there. What I actually had was one of these, uh, a, th a small threaded <laughs> bit, and that uh, nut, and that was going to go on there. Whoops, can't even fit it. There we go. Uh, fit it on there, like so. But the problem is, I don't think this back is going to have enough room in the back here. So I'm going to have, virtually have to drill a hole at an angle just to be able to get it in there. Uh, what this means is it's not going to make a very good seal. So what I've thought is drill a hole into the top here, make it a tight fit so I could actually just tap this through it with some PTFE tape to seal it up. Put some silicone around it as well. See how tight it is. Maybe put a circlip at the back of it and then see how I go. Let me see if I can do that first of all. Uh, now, somebody else also said, again, uh, in the comments, really good comments, they said, actually, uh, put a right angle one of these as well. Yeah, I've, I've kind of looked at that and I've actually got one on order. So I think I may go to that design as well. The other one is that somebody says, why don't you have a quick release as well to make this come in the, taking the pipe off really easy. So when you have to check the oil and stuff like that, absolutely right, really good point. But I've kind of come up with a way that's a little bit different. Okay, I'm gonna change the tubing, uh, the piping that'll come away from it. And I've got tubing with an inside diameter of six mil. This is supposed to be six mil barb on here, but it's a very loose fit. What I want to do is wrap it in PTFE. Still be a, a smooth fit on there, but it'd be relatively tight. And then put a cable tie on it as well. So even if you have to check the oil, it'll be a tight enough fit so no oil comes out, but then you can just slide it off really easily. So whether I put it at a right angle or whether I kind of vertically straight off, it should work. Right, let me do that. Right, I'm gonna take this top off somehow. 
try not to damage it. Ta da! So you can see in here what I did. I packed mine with sort of cloth and everything. And you see it's all there and it's all sort of gunshot out. And basically what that did, that still allowed air to go through, but it's kind of catching it. What I also did was sealed it up as well. We'll see this. So I'm going to clean all this out now and go through the process again. Now what I will do this time, instead of putting cloth through there, I'm going to try and allow more airflow to come through here. So I'm going to sort of pack it with sponge, just any old household sponge will do, um, and just pack it out and see how it goes. I'm going to drill a couple of more holes in there as well, so let more flow come through. Yeah, see how we go. Right, got a drill bit. I'll try and come in at an angle here. What I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is go over the hole as well that I've already made. Right, there we go. There's the hole made. So what I basically want to do is try and screw this through there. I'm going to have to seal it up uh, with silicone and stuff like that. I know that. I just don't think there's enough room in the back to uh, put a thread nut there. There just isn't enough room. So I'm going to try and uh, get this in there. Try and make the hole a little bit bigger. I'm trying to tap it out a little bit, but not totally. I'm. I know lots of engineers out there would be, uh, yeah, very critical right now. But I'm just trying to get this thread going right i finally managed to get a bit of purchase on it uh so i'm just kind of trying to create a little thread it's at this stage where you know lots of people were trying to say oh this is really easy uh if you haven't got the right tools it's quite a pain actually this is hard plastic I'm trying to get a bit of a thread into it because i actually want to thread this through as opposed to just sticking it through a, a wider hole I want it to be as tight as possible. So I'm, uh, it's a bit harder than I thought. Anyway, I've got these old, uh, this old tap and die set. Let's see if it works. Right, let's take it out. Right, it's through. Uh, it's a little bit loose. So now I do need to put some PTFE tape on it. That's gonna tighten up. I'm also gonna put some silicone around there as well. Hopefully, you know, that'll work. Just stick it through there. Job done, right. <laughs> always forget which way this goes on basically as you're turning the thread you want the PTFE tape to tighten up as well so that's it because it's wrapping around this way and I'm turning that way there we go yeah again all you pipe fitters out there just look away I know I know I know right this goes that in there tighten this up right it is on there we go now, what I'm gonna do is seal that up uh, with some silicon as well. Let me do that. Right, big silicon gun um, in there, right. Now, many of you might be asking, why am I putting silicon when I've got PTFE tape on there? Uh, the fact of the matter is, I don't think I've done a very good tap and hold there. It's hard plastic, it's a little bit fractured on the edge there, I think you can see there as well. So I'm just trying to make it doubly sure. Um, the other thing that came up on the first video as well is about, you know, if let's say you screw this up and it doesn't work out for you for whatever reason, just go and buy another one, uh, another dipstick, right? So they're about 16, 18 pounds, uh, 20 odd dollars, whatever. Um, the problem is in the UK, would you believe, there is a four month waiting list uh, uh, for these right now, which is a crazy, right? Uh, so if you're not sure about doing this job, make sure you get a spare one first and then do it, you know. Um, now, I have, uh, I've actually ordered one, a spare one, a stock one, as it were, because afterwards, after this whole trial, after this whole test, if I don't think this is doing anything, uh, guess what? I'm just going to take it off and just revert back to, you know, a standard dipstick, uh, you know, so that's where I'm at with it. Right, let me carry on sealing this up. Okay, so the next thing to do is kind of seal up your dipstick a little bit. So you've drilled your holes at the bottom, two, three, four, whichever, however many you want. You've tapped your cap as well with uh, some kind of hose connector there. It's all there as well. You've seen it, it's a real faff. You know, if, if you're not sure, get somebody else to do it, you know, tap it properly. If you haven't got the special tools or whatever, whatever you're doing, don't, 
feel tempted to drill a bigger hole than the actual uh, fitting itself uh, because you're gonna have too much of a gap try and go for that painstaking process of trying to thread it through it'd be a lot better for you and it'd be a much tighter fit but I'll leave that up to you anyway right so basically what I'm gonna do is jam something in there that hopefully will let the air come through or squeeze through under pressure uh, but it will kind of catch the bulk of the uh, oil like this rag did right so it stops it spewing out what I'm also going to do is seal this up here this edge here when I pop this back on there with silicon as well so it's anything that gets past this sponge which I'm going to put in uh, will also be trapped in there so basically all I'm doing is saying right any air or any oil residue is kind of forced up through here right get back to here use cloth I'm going to use sponge basically sponge enough sponge just to cut it out and just jam it in there not rock solid but enough so it pushes through lets the air through and look you know it lets air through as well it's going to let oil through as well of course uh, but you know you're trying to create some kind of barrier um, some kind of baffle I suppose in many ways just to stop the air uh, stop the oil spurting out right let me do that all right save that for later for a cleaning job now see now i'm not obviously not going to just jam it in there like that i'm going to try and shape it up a little bit let me just cut this in half yeah i think cut this down a little bit you'll kind of work out how much you actually need uh, there's no specific amount here you want to try and make a good seal all the way around if possible add a little bit more if you need to but say that air is supposed to still be able to get through let me just test it tastes lovely uh yeah look the air still flows through so as long as it catches the oil but the air can still pass through that's what i'm really after yeah now put the cap back on okay so there is a there is a special way here if you look at the cap and then if you look at the the top of the dipstick there you can see there are grooves that align up properly so instead of trying to force it on any any old which way just try and line them up there we go right what i'm going to do is get silicon and put silicon all the way around here yeah i know it's a lot uh basically just wipe it off afterwards right next thing is to try and line this up jam it on now it's on there now i need to try and wipe this off a little bit right there we go uh that's all sealed up now obviously i want to let this cure off a little bit uh before i put this on the bike so uh, i'm going to wait a couple of hours uh two or three hours let this cure off a little bit and then i'm going to go and attach the pipe now the tubing is going to be uh this tubing here it's uh this uh inside diameter six mil i am going to wrap a little bit more ptfe tape on there as well just to make it a bit of a tighter fit and i'm also going to cable tie it on there as well there we go now this fuel filter that i had before as the little mini catch can that's also going to go on there on the other end there you go look it's on didn't even have to heat it up right there we go so that's it i'm gonna let this cure off as i say uh, and then i'm gonna put this back on the bike now and what i would say this as well is um uh, yeah don't forget to check your oil levels on a regular basis just in case you are getting any kind of oil leakage any kind of oil seepage as well again this is kind of an experiment you know i don't really know how effective this is going to be how worthwhile this is really don't know so just just play around with it and see what you know how it works out for you right uh let's see what it looks like on the bike after two or three hours have passed right stick around i'll do that okay so i'm back at the bike now uh i've got the uh the dipstick uh, which i've modified here as well uh i've actually put a bit of ptfe tape uh, on the uh the bar bit right now as i say uh i've really no idea if this is gonna make any difference whatsoever i'm doing it as an experiment uh the first video was really about just trying to show you how you could make something like this with bits that you've got lying around at home um essentially 
so this is kind of Mark II, maybe an updated version really. Um, the problem we've got here in the UK, we're at lockdown right now, so actually getting hold of bits and pieces is really difficult because I can't actually go anywhere to get anything uh, that is not essential. Anyway, so I've had to order this online and wait for this to come as well. But anyway, I've, I've put the new uh, tubing uh, through here, exactly the same setup as in the previous video. I've got the uh, inline fuel filter uh, parked under there under the seat out of sight out of mind long bit of tubing for a lot of hot air and uh, oil to travel up if it uh, need be now basically i'm going to thread it down here and then thread it onto onto the barb there and then uh, see how it goes right okay so once again i've turned the dipstick so that the outlet is facing inwards um you could actually face it outwards actually make it a little bit easier to put the hose pipe on but we'll you know we'll go with that for now right let me see about this right there we go put the hose on the other side let me just uh, show you right there so right there you can see it now i'm just going to put a cable tie on that as well and it's going to be easy just to lift off and put back on again I mean, personally, I don't think you need the cable tie on there, but I'm just adding it as a little bit of extra, if you know what I mean. Right, snip off the excess. There we go, job done. So there we go, just a variation on the first uh, video, just a, a bigger fitting really with a bigger hole uh, to let more air uh, oil come out if required and also to drain back down as well. But hopefully it shouldn't be too much oil because of that sponge baffle there, if you will. Uh, it's all sealed off as well uh, with uh, the silicone and also the uh, the tube is all uh, sealed off as well so hopefully that should work now it's one of those things you're going to have to keep on top of it now I'm sure as I say there are lots of other ideas out there as I say I'm not saying this is the only idea that will work uh, I'm sure there are lots of others out there that might even be better uh, you know but uh, it's one of those things when I come up with one of these ideas it's really first of all to see if you could really do something like this at home with things that you got lying around and then also maybe coming up with other solutions afterwards so hopefully I've done that hopefully I've addressed some of the questions which uh, you know I hadn't even really considered before as well so definitely if you're going to do this uh, if you're not sure uh, maybe just get a spare dipstick first of all um, I've got one on order anyway just in case this has no effect at all and I'm just going to revert back to a standard dipstick I've got to say that um, I've also got to say that yeah the the uh, cap isn't sealed as it is so you're going to have to seal it up you're going to have to put some cloth or some sponge in there you know having this tubing up i think is a better way of doing it because you're allowing uh, the hot air to escape and also for if any oil does come up and is forced through there then it's going to go up the tubing rather than actually sort of spill out everywhere um, but again it's one of those things won't really know um, just as with the external breathers here I think there's going to be a big difference between cold temperatures in the winter and also hot temperatures in the summer as well so that's something I might have to review uh, in time but anyway it's on there let's just see how it goes uh, who knows it might work it might relieve the pressure in the in the crankcase as well as I say you know it's a scavenger oil system anyway so whether there's actual any uh, direct pressure release from the crankcase I'm not 100% sure how effective it's going to be but I think it will have some effect on that crankcase pressure as well which will affect the blow by on the pistons which I think is the most uh, key thing whether there's going to be any performance gain or freer running engine in many ways what some people are uh, alluding to i'm not 100 percent sure I've, I've got to say that as well but anyway look that's it again it's just an updated version uh, and hopefully answer some of your questions as well right on to the next video a couple more come in now subscribe and all that kind of stuff ta-da